Hello and welcome. LetterFF has asked me to make a video about transports because there are some functions of the UI he doesn't understand. I hope this is a valuable addition to the collection of transport videos that's already on YouTube. And we are first going to start with the easiest, the clicking into the transport thing, the manual drop, so to say. And you use this icon to like drop the units where you want them like here for example right and that's super easy the transport is going to fly put that on the ground and the units land and they fire at whatever is around right that's it very easy manual drop then we got the slightly more complex manual drop which is about putting the units in different spots and for that you do the following. Take the transport, give some movement order or whatever, and you put one engineer here, for example, one engineer here. Let's put two engineers here, and one here, and one here. And as you can see, it's going to drop these engineers in the selected places, and they can do whatever you want them to do there. So it is totally fine to only unload parts of the units of the transport and you can spread them to different locations this way, right? Also kind of easy, right? And when you use this manual drop command, it's usually a good idea to already queue up the movement order back to your base. Make it become your workflow to bring the transport home. Even if it dies sometimes on the way back, it will also survive sometimes. So try to save your transport this way. And that's what you gotta know about the manual drop. Then there is more stuff you can use. For example, you can give orders before loading the transport. And uh, where's the transport I wanna use? Oh yeah, that one. Okay, so we take the transport and we take a couple of engineers, for example, and we give the engineers the order to go in the transport and then we tell them to build something here, for example, a PD and an anti-air, right? And now the engineers are going into the transport and we can give the transport the order to drop the engineers here and we give the order back, as explained before, right? And here's what's going to happen. The engineers keep the build order and they start building right after being unloaded. So you don't have to wait for the transport to arrive. You can do it this way. However, if you mess up the timing and the units are inside the transport before you're trying to give these build orders, then giving these build orders won't work. So make sure you're fast enough. And in some cases, it may help to move the transport a little away from the engineers you're loading or the tanks you're loading, which you want to give orders so that you have time to give these orders, right? So that's that. And we take a look at the manual drop order with the attack order and the spread attack order. I'm sorry, I'm kind of tired, so I messed up. I had to cut the video, but I'm trying again now. So you can also give orders to tanks or arty, for example, just like we did with the engineers before. And this time it's going to be attack orders. And I'm taking this group of arty and telling it to go into the transport. And before it loads, I give attack orders to a couple of power generators. Oops, well, whatever. And now they are inside the transport and I'm dropping them next to the power generators. So when they land, they are going to attack the power generators right away, just like the engineers built the stuff right away. But here's the interesting stuff. I gave a spread attack order. You have to bind this in the options if you didn't know. And this is going to spread the RD projectiles onto multiple power generators. And that's how you reduce overkill damage. And this is also the way to get the most out of your RD drops. Because you can kill the entire power in a few seconds. 
Cool, huh? So we got this, and now the alternatives. There is a ferry command that is going to allow transport to memorize a certain route. And it's this button. So there are two ways how you can get it. Either you wait for the transport to land in the position you want it to be, and then you give this ferry command, right? Or you can give a movement order first, and then hold shift, and the ferry command is going to start at the place where the movement order ends. And it's going to deliver the units to the other side. So let's just uh, put like a lab in here or something. And it's going to work just like the manual loading, except it's going to memorize it for multiple groups, right? So if you want to transfer lots of units over a longer period of time, this is going to be quite economic to do so, APM-wise, right? Going to save you some, some trouble micromanaging that stuff. And this ferry command can also be queued up in curves. So, for example, we want to go here, but there is an Antier on the way, and we don't want to fly over there. So, I take the ferry command and hold shift, and I first place it here, and then I place it here. And the transport is going to stop here, but it's not going to unload any units. It's going to unload the units only at the last ferry command. And we take this thing again, and put a scout in here, and you can see it's going to work, just as described. It goes here to the ferry command, doesn't unload it, just flies past, drops it here, goes back to that ferry command, and goes back to the base, and waits for the next unit to be loaded. And the anti-air is not going to hit it. Okay? So we explain this, and I already did it here. I already used the factory ferry, right? So I had this ferry command, and I put the rally point of the factory right into this ferry spot. And this is how everything that this factory produces is going to be put into the transport. Just like that, right? And when the transport is full, flies away, then gets back home to this ferry command factory rally point and it's going to pick up the rest. And you can keep doing that and even use extra transports that assist this ferry point and help the first transport. And that's how this works. And okay, I forgot, but doesn't matter, we still have transports. You can also just take units and load them in here. Okay? So it doesn't have to be the factory. Can be the factory. Both works. And lastly, there's also the factory assist command. And you simply take the transports, assist the factory, and maybe you have more factories that assist your main factory. You tell that factory to build something, but first you send the rally point, right? And let's say we want stuff to land here. Or let's say... Wait, yeah, we go, we go here, 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 here. Just to clarify it, right? And now we start building. So note how the transports are waiting until they are full, and only then they start dropping. Uh, this one was the exception because I didn't have the factory in infinite production. And when the queue is over, the transport will also pick up the units. But if you have infinite production, the transport is always going to wait until it's full. And, <laughs> well, we may need some more transports. And that is how this works. So. I demonstrated it with this super indirect, complicated round movement order just to show you that it doesn't have to be straight, right? So you can use a straight movement order like that, 
but you can also make it more complex and let it fly in curves, and the transports are going to obey. And the last thing we gotta explain is the difference between the ferry and the factory assist. So the ferry tends to not wait, okay? But the factory assist usually waits. What I mean by that is a ferry tends to rather take a half full transport to the destination, whereas the factory command is more likely to let the transport fill completely before it starts traveling. That also means that the transport will have to travel more for the ferry command on average, which means you may need more transports to and uh, to deliver the entirety of all the units in the same time as with the factory assist command. And you are going to have more exposed transports that can get shut down. But this also decreases the risk of losing lots of units inside the transport. And the ferry command is usually quicker when it has to be fast. So let's say you are doing brick drops and you have just one brick, then the ferry is not going to wait for the second brick. It's just going to take the first brick and load it. The reason it didn't do this here is because the hives made the build time so fast, right? But under normal circumstances, the waiting time of the ferry is really short and the waiting time of the factory assisting transport is really long. So with a long waiting time, it always fills. And with a short waiting time, it almost never fills. And this is the difference. So in this video, I explain pretty much every UI element of the transports. Ghettos are not topic of this because we had ghettos in previous videos and if you want I can still do a dedicated ghetto video. And just keep in mind that when you do drops you scout first before you drop because losing a scout doesn't hurt as much as losing a drop. And you also send another scout with the drop or send it a bit later so that it arrives at the same time as the drop. This way you can make sure that if you have to pull out on short notice you can still do so before landing and you may know what to target or when you drop Aurora for example the scout is going to provide the extra range they need to perform. And lastly keep in mind that you need to kill all enemy air to air units that are operating in this area if you want to use drops effectively because transports don't really have HP. So, even T3 UEF transports can, got, uh, can get shut down by ASFs quite easily. So don't rely on that tankiness, because they just aren't tanky. Good luck, have fun applying this knowledge. And see you tomorrow.